Most of us associate stress with heart disease. Chapman University psychology professor Julia Bame joins me to explain whether a positive outlook affects your heart health. Welcome, Julia. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. So, Julia, this is a topic close to my heart since <laughs> I am a cardiologist <laughs> and mm -hmm. I see many, many patients every day. So, what psychological characteristics are associated with heart disease? Is there any certain pattern that you notice? Or? Well, so historically, the research has suggested that people with depression, anxiety, stress, anger and hostility tend to have an increased risk for heart disease. More recently, however, um, the research has started to suggest that people who are happy, more optimistic, um, and have some meaning in life tend to have better cardiovascular health as well. When you're talking about heart disease, you're mainly talking about problems with these coronary arteries, right? Correct. People who have heart attacks, who had bypass or maybe coronary stents, that, yes. that type of heart disease. So when you're talking about anger, does anger lead to heart disease or is it that people who have heart disease become angry? It's a great question and I think researchers are still trying to figure that out. So there's definitely evidence to suggest that psychological characteristics precede heart attacks, mm -hmm. but we also know that people who have heart attacks tend to then have poor psychological health as well. So I think there's a bi-directional relationship yeah. going on. So we don't know it's a chicken and the egg question type yeah. thing. Yeah. When people are angry, could there, is this such a thing as a good anger and a bad anger? I mean, an anger that is appropriate for a situation, is that different for these people than, a I don't even know if there's an answer to this, but is there such a thing as a good, or like when I get angry, it's a good anger, you know what I'm saying? But is, it, is there such a thing as a good and bad anger? I think possibly if you can translate that anger into some sort of action, some sort of positive outcome, there potentially could be a good anger, but I think typically anger is considered to be detrimental to one's cardiovascular health. What about the old thing about keeping your feelings inside and that is not good for cardiac health? Is that true also? or is that Suppression like of emotions. Um, yeah, I'm less of an expert on that arena particularly, but I think certainly if you're able to share your emotions with others, have close social relationship, that's going to be more beneficial than if you keep it all inside. And I guess that the corollary is, and, and I know your study isn't related to that, but you know, good stress and bad stress, how, how would you define a good stress and a bad stress? And do you think there is a difference in the cardiovascular response to those? Yeah, so I think there has been some thinking for a while now that there can be different types of stress. So certainly if you have the resources with which to cope with a stressful event, say in terms of either psychological resources or social resources or even financial resources, if you are able to meet and kind of accept the challenge that that stress might bring to you, then it could be potentially conceived as a positive thing. However, I think when most people are conceptualizing stress, they think of it as a time or an event when they don't have the resources to cope with the event. And I think that's when it becomes detrimental to cardiovascular health. Yeah, so like a bad stress would be you're in traffic, you're angry, you can't get out of that type of situation. That could be bad stress if you don't have the kind of psychological resources with which to deal with it. There's certainly other literature to suggest that if you can distract yourself, think about something else, maybe think about what your day is going to be looking like, rather than focusing and persisting on that negative thing, then perhaps it might not translate into a negative effect. And a good stress might be what? Like somebody, they have a blockbuster book and they're just about, they're stressed out and they're about to give the opening day. That could be Sure, a going on a book tour and giving yeah. lots of interviews. I mean, those tend to be stressful events, but I think if you're well prepared, then it doesn't necessarily have to have a negative impact on your body. Now, when you did your study, when you looked at patients with heart disease, the psychological profiles, what were the characteristics that you honed in on or did you look at everything? So given that a lot of the research has already looked at whether depression and anxiety anxiety and similar negative indicators of psychological health has already been done. Uh, what my research has focused on instead is the positive psychological characteristics that a person might have. So whether a person is optimistic about their future, whether they feel satisfied with their life, if they have meaning and purpose in their life. So that's really the, been the focus of my research. And these were done on people with uh, before they had heart disease? So we've looked at it in two separate ways. In one study, or in several different studies, we've looked at initially healthy people. Um, so people who are healthy, no diagnosed heart disease at all, and then we assess their psychological well-being, their satisfaction, their optimism, 
at that initial healthy baseline. And then we follow those same people for the next five, 10 years to see, well, who goes on to develop heart disease? Who has their first event of either a heart attack or death from a heart attack? And what we found is that those initially healthy people who were also happy and satisfied and optimistic with their life tended to have a reduced risk later on for having a heart attack. So that's one type of study that we've done. The second involves actual cardiac patients. So those people who have already had their first cardiovascular event, and then we look to see, well, what do they look like after that heart attack, and then who goes on to have the next heart attack. So we look at uh, the psychological characteristics after they've had that first event, and then see how those psychological characteristics relate to the time to the next heart attack. So the patients, or the people who did not have heart disease, and they were optimistic, some of them still went on to have heart, heart attacks, right? Sure, yeah. sure. And those who were optimistic, went on to have a heart attack, did they have less mortality or, or did we did not have big enough numbers to say that they did as better than the patients who were pessimistic, had a heart attack and, and survived? Is there a, does it affect so survival? I if guess? I'm understanding your question correctly, on average, optimistic people tend to have a reduced risk for having a heart attack. And this is true even among uh, those people who already have had one heart attack. So the evidence is a little less strong when we're looking at cardiac patients just mm -hmm. because the process of disease is still, I mean, it's, it's in progress, right? It's already initiated. So the effects are slightly smaller in that population. Did, did the optimistic people have a better survival rate after heart attack? Is, or is, we don't, we don't Correct. know. Correct. They did. Correct. Okay. So are you talking about in studies where they're initially healthy? Yeah, and, initially healthy, yeah. Oh, so I don't think that there's been any evidence to see thereafter. Yeah. Usually once they have the first heart attack or death from a heart attack, that's kind of it. the end point for yeah. you guys. You're mentioning optimism and happiness. Are they the same thing? Can you be optimistic and unhappy or happy and pessimistic? How does that correlate? Good together? question. So I think of optimism and happiness and satisfaction and meaning in life all under this broad umbrella that I call positive psychological well-being. And that's really capturing positive psychological characteristics. So all of those constructs tend to be related. So happiness um, is related to optimism. So typically, if you're a happy person, you're also going to be optimistic, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a one-to-one -one correlation. So when you did the studies, you, you had to look at other risk factors, right? You looked mm -hmm. at all, like high blood pressure, high cholesterol, all that stuff, right? Yes. And some people have high cholesterol, but it's well-controlled, and some people have high blood pressure, and it's well-controlled, and some not. You, you factor in degrees of of these risk factors? So typically in the analyses that we do, we control statistically for uh, blood pressure levels, mm -hmm. cholesterol levels, whether or not people are using medication for any of those conditions, such as hypertension. So we're able to statistically control for those sorts of factors. So your studies show that happiness and being optimistic is a good thing for survival in heart disease patients. If you're not optimistic and you're not happy, how do you get there? That's a great question. So right now the evidence for direct uh, relationships between happiness and optimism through experimental evidence mm -hmm. isn't really there yet. We're just not okay. at that point. But in the field of psychology, there is quite a bit of literature to now suggest that we can improve levels of positive psychological well-being through certain strategies. So for example, expressing gratitude for things that go well in your life, thinking optimistically about the future, doing kind acts for other people. So those are all strategies that have been shown to increase a person's well-being. That being said, what rem remains to be seen is whether or not those sorts of improvements in well-being translate to improvements in cardiovascular health. So the data is still out on that, but there's lots of preliminary studies that are okay. underway currently and hopefully we'll have that answer soon. So it's kind of like paying it forward. So one way to get to an optimistic or happiness is to interact with humankind, help other people out, thank them, things like that? Yes. So one of the strongest correlates of having psychological well-being is having social relationships, mm -hmm. meaningful social relationships in your life. And so if there's one piece of advice that I have, it would be for a person to really cultivate social relationships. Of course, in addition to exercising and eating healthy, as your doctor would suggest, but social relationships are really at the heart of it as well. Thank you. It was a great topic.